now heading to the east side of the USA to New York where in October 1968 Rhythm and Blues keyboard player Mike Matthews founded the Electro Harmonic Instrument Effects Company with just $1,000. The Linear Power Booster was the first product followed by models that have become classics like the Big Muff Distortion, the Deluxe Memory Man and the Electric Mistress Flanger. The company was now respected by musicians around the world as innovative and the most iconic foot pedals in the history of instrument effects. And now let's welcome to the show, son of Mike Matthews, Owen Matthews. Hi Lars, how you doing? We're good, we're good. It's good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Now, first question, all the way through this USA special, we're fast, fascinated about the weather. We need to know what the weather's like there. <laughs> It's a beautiful day. It's like about 75 degrees. Just beautiful. That's great. We've got you quite early in the morning as well. Yeah, luckily I, I had some coffee and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. That's great. So over the decades, electroharmonics have continued to break many barriers with new designs for guitars, bass and vocals. You've never really sat back on your laurels. You've, you've always moved forward with new designs. Lately, we've come out with a lot of new products like the 9 series pedals, the B9, C9, Mel9, and Bass9. So the 9 series pedals um, can make it, your guitar sound like a, a keyboard or organ or the Mel9, you get the Mellotron uh, sound. So um, nobody else really has um, pedals that make your guitar have these unique sounds. I mean, you have this uncanny way of maintaining popularity with new designs and sounds, just when we all think it's all been done with distortion, modulation, reverbs and echoes. You just come out with another must-have. We're always inspired by um, mostly the fans that come up with, uh, you know, great, unique ideas, and then it, that that drives us to come up with uh, new sounds. The product catalog is, is bulging once again with new lines, but let's just go back a little bit to some of those iconic designs, which are now very collectible. The linear power booster, which said it started it all in '68. And uh, what about old school players? Uh, we'll all remember how we went wow when the Electro Mystrix came out, and it was featured in so many pop songs around the '70s, like Andy Summers in The Police was walking on the moon. It just was, took so much depth to the song. <laughs> Like Andy Summers uh, has been to the factory. He's become good friends with Mike. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I was lucky enough to go see the police with my father um, at Shea Stadium back when it was still Shea Stadium. And um, Andy Summers is an incredible guitar player and um, he, he's he been a, a very good user of uh, electroharmonic pedals. I mean, you certainly got a highly skilled engineer and de design team there. Have some of these guys been with you from way back? And how do you research new ideas? Um, well, one of the original engineers, um, David Cockrell, um, has been with the company uh, since the 70s. And um, he's still uh, with the company and he actually lives in the UK. And um, uh, one of the things that I remember about David is like, which was really cool, um, was um, Electro Harmonics used to have a, an office in the Empire State Building. And I remember going to see David with my father and he had these really cool, big, like, you know, engineer glasses, like magnifying glasses. <laughs> and um, he just was, the guy's a genius. He's so smart. And um, we also have uh, John Pisani, who's one of our chief engineers who lives here. He's been with the company since the 90s. And uh, he also helped design one of our, my favorite pedals, the Holy Grail. 
And you ha- if you want to live forever, then you have to have the Holy Grail. Hi, I'm Tom with Electro Harmonics out of New York City, and today we're coming at you with the Holy Grail Reverb. It's a reissue of the much-loved original Holy Grail in a compact, die-cast pedal with true bypass and pedal board friendly power requirements. I came over for a factory visit for a guitar magazine oh, many years ago when you were in Cooper Square in New York. And Mike Matthews then was full of great stories. He was excited to tell me about the early days, um, the famous Manny's Guitar Shop, which is not there anymore on sadly 48th Street. The, the shop owner called him up and said, Mike, I've just sold a, a big muff to Jimi Hendrix. How cool is that? It's, uh, it's amazing. And um, Mike, Mike was actually really good friends uh, with Jimmy b- before he was Jimi Hendrix. And um, so there's definitely a lot of good stories. And um, Mike, my father, is an excellent storyteller, and he's a genius. The man also is a great historian, so he knows so much about history. And if you if, if you want to ever talk to him about some history, uh, He's brilliant. Well, that's what we want, isn't it, in the industry? And I met him many times at shows, and he's always got his flagship cigar, but I've never seen him light it. Is it true that he never lights it? No, he doesn't light up the cigars. He just likes to chew them, and he's, uh, he always has his cigar. <laughs> oh, that's great. But thanks to COVID, we haven't met since one of those big shows like the NAM Show 2020, where, again, you've launched an impressive array of new models and some like you've just talked I saw the demos the B9 the C9 the K9 or the Key 9 where you can make some incredibly authentic big B3 Hammond sound from a guitar There's also the, uh, the, the Canyon, the uh, Ocean's Eleven. But we also have the 15-watt um, the howitzer amp, which is really, really cool. It sounds amazing. Sometimes play it with a 412 cabinet. You can play guitar or bass. Um, another new pedal um, is the Nano Metal Muff. It's like super hot. If you like metal, this is it. That's just what we need. I did hear. Uh, or re- read that Mike Matthews called the howitzer a sandwich-sized 15 watt. I think that's great. <laughs> and if we go back to the days of Wishbone Ash we had here in the UK, I know them very well, we were cutting speakers with a razor blade just to get that kinks overdrive saying, and one of the new pedals is called Rip Speaker. <laughs> Yep, that's another one I was just going to mention, and uh, you nailed it. The Rip Speaker has got that Rip Speaker, like, you know, rugged 60s sound, and uh, I can't wait for you guys to hear that, too. Not just pedals for instruments, amongst all the effects, I think there's something like 158 now, last count on the website. Some excellent demos in there. You also cater for vocals like the voice box and the wonderfully named Iron Lung. Yeah, um, we have the voice box, the V256, you can get vocoder, um, there's um, auto tune. It has some amazing features and um, you hear it a lot in hip hop now. Um, people using um, vocoders and the V256 and, and voice box are um, 
you know, really good for voice. All my thoughts lie on dusty shelves. I don't believe a thing they're saying. How I wish I could turn the page to engage. Quiet stares on the shades we hung. The songs I sung. The better you touch me, damn it, that I go again. I disappear anywhere. I can see that you're keeping on. Inside the world of instrument effects, electroharmonics are also leading manufacturers of vacuum valves, or I should say, as we're on the USA special, tubes, high spec tubes, renowned for their reliability and tone. Electroharmonics um, owns the factory in Russia that makes tubes. We have a couple of brands that we own, like the Tungsol, um, Mullard, Genelex, Softec. So we make tubes for uh, Fender, Mesa Boogie, um, as well as other um, hi-fi companies like Audio Research and Macintosh. So we, we supply tubes to all of the big manufacturers in the world. So um, one of the things that I, I wanted to tell you is that when Mike was still in the, we were in the electroharmonics days in the late 70s, it, Russia was having a like a kind of like a, a trade a giant trade show, and they only two American companies went 1979, and one of the companies was Levi's, and the other company was Electroharmonics, and this was in the Cold War days, this is when it was USSR, so it wasn't like we had the best relations in those days. My father Mike was so excited that he brought the first Electroharmonics work band over um, in 1979, and um, while he was there, he met Arusa Bitsikova, and that was kind of the beginning of a relationship where how the whole tube part of our business got started. Later on, in the late 80s, early 90s, was when um, he got the idea of working with uh, the Russians to get tubes manufactured. American tubes like GE, we're no longer making vacuum tubes, so it was going to be only a matter of time before there would be no tubes. Just a crazy, tremendous story in itself, um, not only for uh, the MI, but for like, just like American-Russian relations, which is like, to me, it's like, it's very impressive, you know? Uh, so Mike could be, uh, he already is an incredible businessman, but if he wanted to be, he could also be a, a great, diplomat as well. Fantastic stories. Again, born out of rock and roll. It's just, I mean, if we go back even further to say the 1950s, valves, tubes were found in well, every consumer electronic product, weren't they? TVs, audio equi equipment and radios. But in the music business, we had the transition to maybe a solid state around about 78, which saw the, the, the decline of tube loaded amps and guitars. But over the recent years, new amps and maintaining vintage amps has been fantastic business for you. It's a it's a tremendous business, and um, and uh, it's uh, not only is it a tremendous business, but it's also uh, the type of industry that it should be saved because vacuum tubes sound way better than solid state. It's just it's, there's no if if you're a musician or just a, an audio enthusiast. Uh, the, the sound and tone of tubes, it's just, there's nothing comparable uh, out right now. Owen, it's been a joy to have you on the show. I need to try out that howitzer pedal because that was a band I was in in the 70s. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, man, I just, uh, I'm happy to, to talk with you again, Lars. I've known you a long time since the, uh, since 20 Cooper Square. That's that's like 20 years ago, but uh, it's always good to see you at the at the NAM shows. And if you know if you're in New York again, you please come and uh, and visit us so we can give you the tour, and uh, and and you know go have some uh, pizza. Oh, you've done it. That's it. 
bit settled. I'll be knocking on your door. You get the kettle on, as we say in the UK. You take care, I went, and say hi to the gang there, and we'll speak to you soon. Okay, thanks, brother. Rock and roll. All right, my buddy. Speak to you later. All right. <laughs>